Welcome to your presentation on analyzing restaurant menus. So once prices are decided and a restaurant is in operation, how can we go about analyzing how our menu is actually performing? There's really three key methods that can be used. Okay? Um, the first one, uh, well the first two are within both matrix analyses. So one of them is where you compare your food cost percentage and your popularity for all items to the average, to a weighted average. Or you can use your contribution margin, which is your profitability, to the popularity. When you use this type of analysis, you can start to identify those items that have either too high a food cost percentage or, too, or something that's low, which is positive. Um, you can evaluate the pop profitability of items compared to the average profitability on your item. Again, high for contribution margin being good because it's profitability. And then your popularity being that sales mix, so how popular these items are. So in a perfect world, you'll have a popular item, more popular than your average item on your menu, that is more profitable than your average item on your menu and has a low food cost percentage. That's the perfect menu item because it's bringing you a lot of money profit, it's got a low cost percentage and it's popular, so you're selling a lot of it. These are typically the items that you see restaurants call them their house specialties. So when you go to a restaurant, a lot of these house specialties are not only there, I highlighted because they're really well done and that is the house specialty. A lot of the time it's because it's one of these great items that I just spoke about. Okay? Um, there is also a goal value analysis. The goal value analysis goes into much more detail where it's food cost percentage, it accounts for contribution margin, popularity, but then it starts to look into selling price, variable cost percentage as far as labor. It goes into a great amount of detail. I, um, I suggest you go to your, um, to your literature to review it. Uh, we do not cover in this class because it does go into great detail, but it's a good skill to have to be able to look at it as well. So let's concentrate on the matrix analysis. So this would be the one where we evaluate our popularity and our food cost percentage. So on this side, on this axis, we have high and low food cost percentage. And we should know that low food cost percentage is a positive thing when high is a negative thing. Popularity, high being good, low being bad. So if you go through each area, so high food cost percentage is a negative, low popularity is a negative. So any items that have these two, uh, when you compare your food cost percentage to the average for all items and the popularity for an individual items to all items, if you find an item that has higher than average food cost percentage and lower than average popularity, this is a negative item. This is an item that you need to keep an eye on or possibly remove, uh, possibly even reinvent on your menu. Right? Your high food cost with high popularity, this would be an item that maybe uh, it's doing very well, but maybe we need to figure out how to change this food cost percentage. Two ways of changing food cost percentage, lower your costs or increase your selling price. Okay? Now, you have to be careful in both ways. The only way you can reduce cost is to reduce the portion size or you could use items that are not as costly. Therefore, you're reducing the value people are getting for that selling price. You also have to be careful with selling price because as you remember from restaurant pricing, if you increase pricing too quickly or too much, you can affect the popularity. So it's something you have to be very careful with as you move forward and make any changes. Your low food cost percentage and low popularity, this is an item that makes you money because you're very happy with the low food cost percentage, but that you may want to actually see uh, do better popularity wise. You may want to go ahead and make this into a special. You may want to highlight it somehow. You may want to get your service to suggest it to customers. Okay? And then these are items right here that are great. This is the great spot right here where low food cost percentage and high popularity. So they're popular and they have a low cost percentage. You're very happy with these items. You 
you don't want to do too much with these items basically. So that would be comparing food cost percentage to popularity. Now when we get to contribution margin and popularity, we're looking at pop profitability, which is item contribution margin, and popularity again. And we're always comparing it to the average for all items. Okay, so each individual item to the average of all items, so the weighted average. So in this case, high item contribution margin means you have profitability. You're, ha you're doing better than average as far as your profitable uh, menu item, but you're not popular. This is one of those items that you would want to make sure you increase its visibility on your menu, uh, make sure that you actually get people to order more of it somehow, suggest it, all of those things that we talked about in the previous slide, you want to do it with these items as well because your these are items that are making you money but you, you just don't sell enough of them. Okay? So you want to sell more of these items. Your low item contribution margin, low popularity, um, this could be referred to as a dog. Okay, so we actually call these a dog. The previous one is a puzzle because you don't know how you can go ahead and sell more, but you want to. A low item contribution margin and low popularity, we refer to those as dogs because they're not making you money and they're not popular. Um, the only reason why you should keep items like this around is if you can reinvent them or if there's something what we call a loss leader. Okay, a loss leader would be an item that brings people in but doesn't necessarily make you money and you hope that when they come in to order such an item they're purchasing alcohol or they're purchasing another meal with that or uh, it's just bringing them in to spend more. Uh, two examples I can think of off the top of my head would be uh, first of all IKEA. IKEA doesn't make money off their food. Uh, if you go there, you can make you can get a 50 cent hot dog or a plate of meatballs with mashed potatoes and vegetables for five dollars. They're not making money off their food. They're making money off the fact that they hope that you're going to come in and purchase something in their furniture store. Uh, another one would be wings. Wings are often sold at a very big discount. Restaurants don't make very much money off of them. They make money off the beer that's typically purchased with those wings. They hope that people are going to purchase more beer and more beer and more beer. Okay. Uh, high item contribution margin, high popularity, very positive here. This is what we call a star in menu engineering. It's very profitable and it's very popular. Those would be those house specialties typically. Um, so you'd see, you know, at your at the keg when they offer you prime rib all the time. Typically, it's because they're making a lot of money off of it, and it's a very popular item. And then low item contribution margin, high popularity. This is what we refer to as a plow horse. Okay? It's not making, it all, making you a lot of money, but it's very popular. This is where you need to try and somehow make a bit more money off of these items because they're so popular. Again, raising the selling price or reducing costs would be your two options, but you have to be careful with what we talked about. Okay. So once we do this, what do we do with the information? Well, we can use it to increase overall profitability. So just minor changes using the matrix analysis can have a huge effect on the overall profitability of a restaurant. Um, you can use it to increase popularity of items with high contribution margin and low food cost percentage. So if they're not yet popular, you, you want to try and get people to order people that make you a lot of money and that have low food cost percentage. These are items that you want people to order more than the ones that have low contribution margin and high food cost. Um, you can use it to identify items that are high in contribution margin but are not popular. So basically the same as this, you want to make sure that you are making more, you're selling more of these through marketing measures. And then you can combine both analysis, food cost percentage and contribution one to make the most educated decision. Uh, now before we go to Excel, just so that you're aware, banquet receptions, um, you have to have a different approach for this. The main reason is, is there's typically different packages associated with um, different types of receptions, just different types of banquets. Uh, there's a diff completely different type of analysis here uh, where we're still looking at it almost the same way. 
However, we're looking more at package pricing and we really have to break it down by packages that are offered and not necessarily menu items, okay? But for now, let's stick to menu items. And if you go to your video lecture sheet, you should have David's menu analysis worksheet uh, where it's already completed, where you've got the number of items sold. So these would be all the items. And then to find out the total, and then we find out what the average number of, uh, is sold for all items. Okay, so that would typically be your um, your sales mix. So this would be your sales mix, what people are ordering. Okay, and then this would be the average sales mix. So how many how many total plates you sold divided by how many items you're offering. Okay, so that gives you an average of items that are being sold uh, purchased. Your selling price to find out your average selling price, your total sales, and this would typically be for a certain period of time. In this case, we could probably just say that this would be for a week, let's say. Okay, so this is the menu analysis for David's menu for a whole week. Okay, so the total sales for the week for these items, you'd find out the cost of each item and the total cost for that week. So your number sold multiplied by your item costs. Okay. And then your item contribution margin is simply your selling price minus your item cost. That gives you how much you're making on each plate each time, okay? And your contribution margin, again, is the money, the profit you're making that can now go towards all other expenses within your restaurant. Your total contribution margin would simply be how many you sold times how, many, how much contribution margin you have for one item. Okay, and then your food cost percentage, we should feel comfortable with this, cost divided by sales times 100. Okay, so if you go through the worksheet, uh, all the cell references are there, so you can just get comfortable with that, uh, but that's less important at this point. You'll cover this in other courses as well. Um, the important thing is evaluating this right here. So with our popularity analysis, we want to evaluate each um, item, how much each item sold compared to this average. So we would typically go through each one and um, for dry rod ribs, we sold 210, the weighted average is 148, so it has, has higher than average popularity. Ribs again, 242 items compared to 148 high. And then we'd go through each one. Uh, that one is low, low, low. Oh, still low, just barely, high and high. So again, all I did was compare each item. So mesquite chicken, we sold 160. The average is 148 for all the items, and I'm just comparing it to, to the average. So you've got one, two, three, four items that are high popularity and four that are, have low popularity. The food cost analysis, I found out my average food cost uh, by dividing my total cost, my average total cost divided by my average total sales. So this is my average food cost percentage. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to compare each food cost percentage to the average food, co food cost percentage. So again, we would go low, uh, and this is a positive thing, remember that. Uh, high, and again, all I did was compare 34.31 to 35.82. 42.71% to 35.82%. Um, we'd be looking at high, low, low, high, low, low, okay? So again, low being positive, low food cost percentage means I'm lower than the average, high means I'm higher than the average food cost percentage, and high cost is negative, right? And then item contribution margin analysis. And this is where we're comparing the contribution margin for each item compared to the average, okay? So in this case, we have uh, 785 compared to 618, high. My next would be 570 compared to 618, that's low contribution margin, 850, that's high, and I'll just keep on going high, low, low, low 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 ouch that's not good so the average is being brought up by these two items we can see that right away because all of these have lower than average okay so we'd have to be careful as we start to analyze this 
So now we can start to analyze. So first, let's start with popularity and food costs and percentage. So we're looking for something that's high popularity and low uh, food cost percentage. These are positive. So I would highlight this item and go, ooh, I'm very happy with this item. It's very popular and it has low food costs. I'm happy. High popularity and high food cost, I'd want to basically, we could put a yellow here because we want to make sure that we identify um, the fact that we want to work on this food cost percentage. Okay, so we don't want to get rid of this menu. We want to try and figure out how we can bring down our food cost percentage in a way that doesn't affect uh, the demand. Okay, because the demand is there. How can we affect this food cost percentage so that the demand stays and we make ourselves more money? Um, low popularity, high food cost. Uh, this would be one of those items. Oh, I didn't want to do it that way, sorry. I would go ahead and I would highlight this in red, okay? Not popular, it's very expensive. So I'd be very careful with this item right here. And then low popularity, low food cost, I'd wanna highlight this in yellow, okay? Uh, because it's not very popular, but I make more money, it's got a low food cost. So what can I do to bring up this popularity is what I would say. Same thing here. Low popularity, high food cost. Right away, before I move forward with my item contribution margin, I want to highlight this menu in negative because unless it's giving, bringing me a lot of profitability, I'm probably going to get rid of this menu. Uh, if it also isn't bringing profitability to my menu, oof, I'm very, I'm worried about this item. Um, and then half roast chicken, high popularity, that's good. Low food cost, oh, both of these have this. So I'm happy with both of these items. So that's how you would go about analyzing this menu. You would compare the popularity and the food cost combined. Okay, so that's the popularity and food cost percentage analysis. Um, so as we move forward, we can start to highlight menus that we're really happy about, uh, menu items. So high popularity and high contribution margin. And now we're gonna just ignore food cost percentage for a second. High popularity, which is good, High contribution margin, which is popular pop, uh, profitability, that's good too. All of a sudden, if you take a look across, we're, we love the dry rubbed ribs. Uh, it's making us, it's very popular, low food cost percentage, and it's making us a lot of, more than the average every time we order. This is a great menu item that I want to highlight on my menu. Okay? Barbecue ribs, we wanted to work on this food cost, and if you take a look, yeah, there it is again. Okay, so low profitability, but it's really popular. So high food costs, low profitability, these will often go hand in hand. So what can we do? What can we do to bring up, uh, to lower this food cost percentage, which will then increase the item contribution margin? So I would want to look at these two right here and figure out how. So right here we could go, great item. And now when we have an item like this, if there's such demand, we can look at potentially increased pricing just a bit, okay? Because we could make maybe a bit more money as long as you're being careful with how you're doing. An item like this, I would probably make a note, high popularity, um, need to either raise price or lower cost. Okay, those would be the options in order to make more money every time you sell it, but you have to be careful. If we take a look at the pro the popularity, it's really high in popularity. So even if I increase my price slightly, um, right now it's at 570 item contribution margin compared to 618 for the average. Well, I only need to make another, mm, sell it for another about 48 cents, 50 cents for it to be over this average. So what if we just brought this up to $10.95? That's an extra dollar in item contribution margin, which would help my item contribution margin. Now, I'm not too sure what it would do with the food cost percentage, but actually, if I have it all linked, $10.95. So there it does it for us. So we solve our item contribution margin issue, but we didn't solve our food cost percentage by doing that. So this becomes high. 
Um, so we would take a look at that and play around with menu engineering like this to decide what can we do with this item. And if you have this much demand, it's the most popular item, you can probably play with pricing a bit because you've got that much demand. Okay. Um, next item, I was thinking about getting rid of this item because it has low popularity, high food costs. It also has really high contribution margin. So I'm making a lot of money off of it every time, even though it's got a high food cost percentage. But if we take a look at the popularity, this item is not a great item. Even though it's making me a lot of money every time I sell it, the only reason why I'd keep it on is, um, is if it was my only seafood option. Okay? Okay, because the only thing it's doing is bring me a lot of money every time it's ordered, but it's not even being ordered. It's my least popular item. So you have to take a look at a number of things. Um, low popularity, low food costs. So uh, I just want to make this more popular, but it has a low profitability. So all of a sudden, I want to take a look a bit deeper into this. 88, so it's one of my least popular items. Um, it's not very popular, so it's increasing the pricing is going to be very tough to do. Um, my food cost percentage is low, but it's not making me enough money. So pricing is the issue here. Uh, but if I play with the pricing, I, I may just keep this low. So I, I'm not too sure what I would do with this item. You could either try and reinvent it, uh, bring it out, um, make it a brisket sandwich instead and introduce it uh, as a different item. Uh, you can do a number of things. Uh, you could also get rid of it if you wanted to. Sausage links, low popularity, low. So this is another one, same as the brisket. Uh, now, here is one that we just need to get rid of, the cowboy combo. Okay? If we take a look, low popularity compared, to, even though it's right there, it'd be right on the cusp of being high. But the food cost percentage, 42.21, that'd be a very high food cost compared to the average. And then item contribution margin, it's low. So it's 575 compared to 618. So these are all negative things across the board here. The only thing that would potentially save this is the fact that it's so close to being a pop popular enough menu item. Um, so you may want to make some changes to make these, your food cost percentage and your item contribution margin flip, and then somehow promote it. Okay, so you wouldn't necessarily get rid of it because it's right there. Okay? And same thing with the item contribution margin. But the three reds typically means you'll get rid of it or reinvent it. Uh, high, low, we are positive here, but now item contribution margin being low, uh, that's not necessarily a great thing. Okay, So we need to somehow make a bit more profit every time we sell these two items. So we need to figure out how we can do that. Is it a smaller chicken? Is it a different um, different provider of the chicken that can give it to us at a lower cost? Can we play with this pricing a bit more um, to increase my contribution margin? Uh, it's selling quite a bit, so can I just increase by just a bit? Okay, So that's what you would do with the matrix analysis. You start to look at popularity compared to the average po popularity of each item. You look at the food cost percentage of each item compared to the average for all items, and you compare the profitability of each item compared to the average. Once you have all of these, you can start to really make more educated decisions about what to do with your menu.